Hello, today we're going to be doing a 6.2 notes on similar figures. Our objectives will be to identify similar figures, um, be able to solve problems involving similar figures, and students will also be able to find the scale factor between similar figures. Alright, so let's go ahead and start with the first exploration. So go ahead and find this link, click on it. Um, we'll use the slider, and then we want to figure out what do we notice about the angles, and then what do we notice about the ratios made by corresponding sides. So let me go ahead and open that up so we can see it. So we have this slider up here. It says bigger, it says smaller, and we can move that to wherever we need. So the first thing I want us to look at are the angles. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. All right, let's go ahead and make it like in the middle a little bit and maybe a little bit bigger. All right, so what do we notice about those angles? Go ahead and take a second, fill out that question. Alright, so what I notice about it is that these angles stay exactly the same, right? No matter where I put it, if I take a look at like the 111 from A to E, I see that they're all the same. Alright, our next are the ratios. So the ratios are right over here to the right. Um, we have these fractions and then the numbers and what they are all equal to. So let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. Take a look at those numbers. A little bit bigger and even bigger. All right, what do you notice about these ratios? I notice that they are all the same number no matter what um, sides we are comparing. So like EF and AB, EF, where is that? Up top and AB is also up top. And then with FG and BC, we see that they are different numbers, you know, because we have 5.56, 5.4, and then 9.14 and 9.6 but the ratios still end up being the same number, which is 1.05. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the rest of the notes. So the angles are the same and the ratios are also the same. So similar figures, if two figures are similar, then they have the same angles, but not necessarily the same sides. So therefore we can have smaller triangle, we can have a larger triangle. They are similar, but not the same. So when you think of the word similar, that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, that they're exactly the same, that they're doing the same thing. But what this, but we, what we will have is that if this angle is 20, this angle will also be 20. Um, so where the angles will be the same, but the sides will have some sort of ratio. So if I have one and two, let's say this is two, then this one would be four because then they would have that ratio of one half throughout each of those. And we'll, we'll go through on how to find that exactly today. All right, so corresponding angles of similar figures. With similar figures, the corresponding angles are congruent, which I was kind of talking about in that previous pic drawing I was doing. So remember the little, um, not dash marks, but uh, little curves on each angle. That just shows that those are congruent. So we have our similarity statement. So triangle ABC is similar, that's the symbol, similar to triangle DEF. So I have A and D, those are similar. They only have the one curve. And the nice thing is, is that they're also at the front on both of them. So we have A and D are at the front. So even if we don't have those triangles, I would have been able to say, oh, well, angle A and angle D are congruent, and then B, E, and F, and C. And so we can even write out some of those statements. So angle A is congruent to angle D, angle B is congruent to angle E, and angle C is congruent to angle F. All right, and then corresponding sides of similar s figures. The corresponding sides of similar figures are a ratio. So note that each ratio is equivalent to the scale factor. So a similarity statement correlates the congruent angles and proportional sides. So I guess this, I should actually write proportional here, huh? That would make a little bit more sense. So we have the proportions, which are the ratios. Sorry, that was totally my bad. <laughs> so um, the proportional sides. So what that really means is that we have AB, 
And once again, we can use that similar statement, so A, B, and it's the first two letters, so it's going to be the first two letters of my second triangle. So all over D, E. And then we can continue going. So A, B, and then we have B, C, all over E, F. And then our last one, which is A, C, all over D, F. And the important thing is, is that you keep the same triangles on the top and bottom. So I have one triangle on the top, and then I have my other triangle on the bottom. So it stays very consistent. I don't want to flip-flop those at all. All right, let's go ahead and get into a couple examples. So example one through three, given that triangle ABC is similar to triangle QRS, we want to write a proportion comparing the sides of the two triangles. So this is S, and this is three. Sorry, I got cut off of my screen. Okay, so we want to go ahead and create those proportions. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the first two letters, A, B, and Q, R. All over Q, R. And we can just continue and go through the whole triangle. So B, C is the second two letters. So I'm looking at the second two letters, R, S. All right, B, C, R, S. And then if I do A, C, I'm going to do Q and S. Alright, so those are all of our proportions for these triangles. Now we want to go ahead and write a scale factor of triangle ABC to triangle QRS. So the scale factor, we want to go ahead and pick one side. It doesn't matter which side. I'll go ahead and do BC since it's right in front of me. And that means if I use BC here, I want to use RC, RS on the bottom. So there's that side. So BC is 12. RS is 3, and then I just want to simplify that as much as possible. So 12 thirds, we get 4. All right, and it's really important, I didn't point this out initially, it says ABC 2 QRS. So that means whichever triangle comes first goes on the top. So ABC was on the top, QRS is on the bottom. Now if we take a look at uh, Problem three, what is the scale factor of triangle QRS to ABC? I can use those same two sides. I just want to flip flop them because I now want QRS to be on the side and ABC to be on the bottom. Okay, so then when I simplify this, I now have one fourth. So depending on which way you're going is whether the triangle is therefore growing or getting smaller. Um, so that's why it's really important to pay attention to which triangle to which triangle we are going. All right, I want everybody to go ahead and try example four. Go ahead and take a look at that. And then when you come back, it should be on your screen and you can compare your answers. All right, here is four, five, and six. So with this one, we, did, we didn't have a triangle. Um, we have a quadrilateral, we have four different sides. Um, so therefore we have four different proportions instead of three because we have those four sides that we're working with. And then of course, each of our scale factors they are the reciprocal of one another, if you guys are paying attention to that at all. Um, so we have one half and two. You just flip that fraction right over. You, you get either one scale factor or the other scale factor. All right, example seven and eight. Find the scale factor, small figure to larger figure. That's important for each of the set of similar figures below. So we'll look at seven, then you guys can try eight. So we want to go from the small figure to the large figure. Here is our smaller figure. So that means what we're going to have is small figure over large figure. So my small figure, I know JB. That is the only side of my small figure I know. So I want to compare that to my other, or, or, oh, these aren't even triangles, sorry, <laughs> um, rectangles. Um, the two corresponding sides to so that would be DH, two letters that correspond to that side. And now I can plug in the numbers. So I have four all over seven. All right, and I can't simplify that anymore. So this would be my scale factor between the two rectangles. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and try number eight. Go and pause the video, take a second, try it out. All right, let's take a look at it. So 
I'm doing small over large. I chose CA with my larger triangle, so but I only knew side 9, and then EF was the corresponding side. So get my scale factor. Alright, let's go ahead and go to example 9 through 12. So given each pair of similar figures, find the requested side. All right, now our proportions are really going to come in handy. So we're trying to find DE. Let's see, I'm going to put an X where DE is because that's what I'm trying to find. All right, so DE, D and E, we know that's going to be similar with AC. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that, make sure they're the same color. All right, and then the only other side, so we are going to have to create a proportion. So I, I need more than one side because if I were to set this up, right, I have x over 10. I can't solve that. I can't figure out, like, I don't know what my scale factor is. I won't be able to solve for x. So therefore, I need my other, um, another proportion in order to solve. I scroll back up real quick. All these proportions we were making here, those are really helpful. If you can create these proportions, you can then apply it to find all the sides and angles that you can, that you need. So down here, um, I needed to find DE, so I made sure to put that up top. And actually, we are going to write it like this to make sure that we don't miss anything. And then CA. And it has to be equal to, so I only know 5, so that's DF, which was BA. So there. I'm going to put DF on top, and then BA on the bottom. Once again, we have to have one triangle on the top and the other triangle on the bottom. I can't flip top those fractions. Alright, so I already did the X over 10 for the DE over CA. Now I'm going to do DF over BA. So that's 5 over 6. Now I can go ahead and cross multiply, right? So I have 6X equals 50. Go ahead and divide by 6. And x equals, let's see, if we reduce that, would be 25 over 3. And so remember, x is de, so if you want to write that as, well, de equals 25 over 3. All right, let's go ahead and try another one together. So number 10, we want to find ml. So let's see. This is l over here. It's just not drawn or it got cut off. We're trying to find ML, and the nice thing is it already has a variable for us, which is D. So let's see, ML, first two letters. So IJ is the first two letters of my other triangle. Okay, and then let's see, what else do I know of triangle LMK? I know side MK. So once again, I put MK up top. Top, and I'm going to figure out what that matches with. So MK is the last two letters, so JK is also my last two letters, so I'm going to go ahead and put that. Once again, having one triangle over the other triangle. Let's go ahead and highlight, let's see, MLIJ down here, and then KJ, JK. So. Alright, so now I can plug in all of these numbers. So I have D all over 10 is equal to 18 all over 6. And once again here, I can go ahead and cross multiply. So I have 6D is equal to 180. Go ahead and divide by 6, and D equals 30, which is ML. Alright, I want you guys to go ahead and try 11 and 12. Make sure you are creating these proportions so that you can compare them. Um, you know, use, use your highlighters, circle, underline, as much as needed so you can compare all the sides. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at... Let's see, 11 and 12. There we go. So I made the proportions, and then I plugged in the numbers, and I was able to solve for my missing side. I just plugged in X for missing side. If you want to use KLGH, you can, or another variable. Alright, let's go 
ahead and take a look at 13, 14, and 15. Okay, so given that JMLK is similar to ADCD, so I have all these different sides that I'm working with. One second, I got kind of cut off, so let's go ahead and put that in there B and C. Alright, our first goal is to find the measure of angle M. So I have angle M here. Remember, the angles are congruent. So if I have angle M, I'm going to once again compare that. So it's my second letter, and so it has to be the second letter of my second figure. So I have angle D. So angle D is 70 degrees. Oops, let's go back to the next. 70 degrees. So that means angle M also equals 70. They have to equal that same thing. And we could do things, the same thing with angle C. So angle C, we can highlight it. That's the third letter, so I need the third letter, which is angle L. So now I can plug in all of that stuff. Oh, and angle L has that box, which means it's 90 degrees. So angle C is also 90 degrees. So whenever you're comparing angles, all you have to do is set them equal to each other and you're done. Whenever we're trying to find the length of a side, though, we do have to create those proportions. So we have JM. Let's see, JM. I'm going to erase these highlights I already have. JM, which means I need AD for my other triangle. And then I'm going to go ahead and take a look at um, my figure that has JM. I have two sides that I know, which is KL and ALM. I'm going to kind of look at my other triangle and see if I know those two parts as well. So LM, similar to DC, and KL, BC over here. I don't know BC, so therefore I want to use DC so that I can, I need a, another proportion in order to figure out uh, what my missing side is that I'm looking for. So therefore, if I'm going to do JM, or not JM, sorry, LM, there we go, looks like the middle letters, I'm going to use DC as well. O, M, and then D, C. And then I can go ahead and plug those numbers in. So I am trying to find J, M. A, D is 28. L, M is 15. And D, C is 20. So once again, we're going to go ahead and cross multiply. So I have 20 M, or 20 J, M is going to be equal to 420. I'm going to go ahead and divide by 20. And I have JM equals 21. Alright, so the sides do take a little bit more work, but if you create these proportion statements without the numbers first, it makes it super easy to just take those numbers and plug it into the sides that you know, and then you can find the sides that um, you asked about. All right, and then let's go ahead and do 16, 17, 18. Those are our last few U tries. Then pause the video, try those out. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So this one we did have to do a little extra width in order to find angle Y. If you see angle Y um, is, or for Y, it's angle C, which is congruent to angle F. And I had to find angle F, but once I knew what X was, I was able to do that. So that's what this extra work is over here, so I can actually find what angle F was. And then of course 18, I did those proportions, those are very important proportions to do, so all you have to do is plug in your numbers. Alright, and that's the end of 6.2. If you have any further questions, please be sure to ask the teacher and rewatch the video as needed. Have a wonderful rest of your day.